Secretary and MP for South Swindon, Sir Robert Buckland. Robert, lovely to see you this morning. Thank you for joining me. Let's just get started because I, you, with your legal hat on, you're a former lawyer, you were Justice Secretary. Can we talk about this Russell Brand situation? I mean, some people are saying, look, this is trial by media. He hasn't had an adequate right of reply. Questions are being asked of some of the broadcasters that employed him. This all happened on their watch, Channel 4, the BBC. What's your reaction to the story, Robert? Well, uh, I think uh, all of us have to uh, react with some uh, shock about these releva revelations because uh, they involve uh, very, very serious uh, matters involving very young women in, in many respects. And um, uh, you know, I can't imagine anything you know, more serious in terms of the conduct, uh, alleged conduct of a, of a, of a major um, uh, figure who is mm. well known in public life a star look I, I mean i i don't know whether there are ongoing criminal proceedings it doesn't sound we're waiting to hear we're waiting to yes, hear whether the police investigate but should channel four and the bbc investigate themselves well, look, I, th I think that actually it's probably the hallmark of a, of a more uh, open um, system and, and, and broadcaster to allow teams within uh, their own uh, organization to do that however we know that the the path here is a rather checkered one. Uh, we've seen this before with the BBC, where you know units go off and do things unilaterally, and then yeah. and then things disappear into a sort of miasma of indecision. I think I think the Savile case was 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 a, was a, was an appalling example of, of that. Um, and I very much hope here that we do get clarity and that um, uh, victims of crime uh, get justice. Yeah. Um, that surely has got to be in everybody's interests. Uh, and, um, you know, I mean, the, the news is dominated by it today. Yeah. I think it's really important that we now give, you know, complainants the space and the time to, to make their complaints or not, and then for, for due process to take place as, as this country is, is renowned for. Let's also now move on to another big story in today's papers, and it's been big all week, this XL bully ban that Rishi Sunak has suggested. Now it's being said that actually, when you consider that some of these dogs are puppies, a lot of them being inbred, there seems to be kind of something in the bloodline that makes them more aggressive. One of the dogs associated with the dogs that have come to the UK is called Killer Kimbo. Should actually the dogs that are in the country now be culled to avoid any more humans being killed? Well, look, I think we've got to look at this urgently because what I'm worried about is if we uh, get a precise definition here and then ban uh, the dog, are we actually covering uh, the various um, uh, breeds and the various uh, mutations that might exist out there um, in an adequate way? What I don't want to see is the, is the law falling into disrepute um, and not keeping pace with the reality of the situation. So do you advocate so a cull then? Well, look, I, I think we, we've got to put safety first. And frankly, uh, we've seen some horrendous incidents and incidents as well involving owners. You know, I, I think uh, people are saying, oh, it's all about the owners. So, some of the owners of, of these dogs themselves have been attacked or even killed. Mm. Um, I don't I don't think that's the right uh, approach. And therefore, you know, looking at the, the horrendous scenes that we, we're seeing some now, um, I, I think action has to be taken uh, in order to, to deal yeah. with this problem. For people listening at home, we're just looking at footage of the attack that took place in Birmingham. What about uh, licences for owners, Sir Robert? Well, we had licences until the late 80s. Um, I mean, they were quite a, a low amount of money even then. Uh, and a lot of dog owners just didn't have them. My, my, I think licences in principle are a great idea. You know, I think I think it would reinforce the, the point of responsible ownership. But they've yeah. got to be enforced. And therefore, we need a whole new apparatus to do that. Um, are we going to be able to fund that properly? W will the cost of licences be prohibitive? Uh, yeah. I know they've got them in the Republic of Ireland. Um, I certainly think we should have another look. It's now nearly 40 years since we had them. Clearly, we can't just go back to the old system. No. But, um, concept of responsible ownership of dogs is one that I think most of us in this country take hugely seriously. Uh, you know, millions of people okay. have um, and do a job, but um, I think we should look at this as well. Um, so, Robert, I must ask you about the escape of Daniel Khalif. Um, lots has been said about the state of our prison system. You were Justice Secretary. Do you have to take some responsibility for what happened at Wandsworth and the state of our prisons? 
Well, I, I worked very hard in, in my years as Justice Secretary to increase funding, and we did that. We increased both revenue funding and staffing in our prisons and uh, the prison building programme as well, which is ongoing, billions of pounds uh, into new prisons being built. Look, this is a system under pressure. I don't pretend that it was uh, easy in my time. In fact, we had to deal with COVID, uh, which was a huge challenge, which we managed to negotiate, I think, pretty well, uh, and staff worked very hard on that. I think the issue, this was an, an unusual and un an almost unprecedented uh, daring escape. I think that what it's done is shone a light upon uh, the scale of the task in our prisons and the hard uh, job that uh, officers there, do. Isn't there a perception, though, Sir Robert, that nothing much changes? I mean, I remember going into prisons a decade ago and they had these issues. We also, I spoke to your successor, Alex Chalk, last week, and I sort of asked him about the court uh, backlog. And it's the same in Crown Court since COVID. It's 62,000 cases. So there's this sense that nothing has changed under the Conservatives, which is really damaging for you as a party hoping to win the next general election. Well, look, I think that's that's not right. I think that in terms of the reforms that, that I made to make sure that people stay behind bars for longer, particularly serious, violent and sexual offenders, that was an important uh, reversal of Labour's policy of releasing people at halfway, uh, no matter what, what their offence was. Um, and, and I make no apology for that. What I do think is that across the board, and this applies to both parties, we need to invest more in the justice system. It's often forgotten. It's unfashionable. It's less... It's, you you hear less about it than yeah. schools and hospitals, and yet it is a hallmark of our society. So uh, if I was still in office, of course, I'd be banging the drum very, very strongly to get more resources for courts and prisons. I managed to make some progress in my time, but yeah. we need to do more. I mean, the police are blaming austerity cuts under the Conservatives for what seems to be a breakdown when it comes to dealing with low-level crime. We've got the Mail on Sunday now has launched a campaign to try and catch shoplifters. I mean, last time I checked, that should have been Copper's job. What's this whole situation that's happened with people not being criminalised for nicking stuff up to 200 quid? What's happened is, under the Conservatives, people seem to have been given carte blanche to thieve. Well, I, I think that um, the, the current situation with shoplifting is unacceptable. I deal with the issue locally here in my constituency. Um, I think that it's time for uh, everybody, uh, the, the, the big uh, uh, shop um, networks plus the police, to take this seriously. You know, we've got shop workers on the front line who are doing their level best to combat this crime and who do not feel supported. And that's why I think now it's up to uh, each police force in the local area to really uh, come come together and bear down on this crime. We know that in most towns and cities, it's a hard core of, I'm afraid, a, a group of habitual offenders, mm. many of whom might have a or drugs addiction. We know who these people are in the main and organised shoplifting as well. Let's crack down on that because in my, my belief is that, you know, it's like the broken window theory, isn't it? You yes. know, we heard in New York years ago. If you deal with the, 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 the crimes at that end of the spectrum, then you start to see, um, uh, you know, towns and cities improve and, and a whole attitude change. So zero to tolerance. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's shoplifting is theft. It is a crime with a penalty of up to seven years of imprisonment. And I think that uh, it's now time for the police and everybody concerned to work hard to bear down on this on this menace, frankly, which Sir is Robert, affecting towns and cities. Lovely to have your company this morning. Thank you so much for your time. That's Sir Robert Butler, the former Justice Secretary.